Today we're going to talk about control flow statements in Python. Control flow statements are the statements that allow you to control the execution of your code. When code should execute, how many times, if at all. There are three basic families of control flow statements, and we're going to talk about each. Sequential, conditional, and what's called iterative, sometimes referred to as looping. Depending upon what you want to do in your program, you'll use different control flow statements. Let's begin by talking about sequential. Sequential is just like what it sounds like. It's one statement executed after another without skipping any of the instructions at all. Remember, in Python, you can put one statement per line or multiple statements if they're separated by semicolons. The next type is called conditional. In conditional execution, your code will execute based upon different logic tests, whether certain conditions evaluate to be true. This is a great way to add simple decision making to your programs. In the Python language and in other languages, the if statement is commonly used to perform conditional execution. Last but not least, there's iterative execution. To iterate means to repeat something over and over again. So in this particular type of execution, you loop or execute the same code either a fixed number of times or until some condition is no longer true. In most languages, this is implemented using while and for statements. The if statement is probably the most popular control flow statement in nearly every language. It allows you to execute code based upon a condition evaluated to true. If you need more than one condition to be checked, there are variations of the statement, and I'll show you what that looks like as well. Notice how I have a process flow here. It represents what I want to do in a basic program that checks your height. I want to read from the user their height, and then I have a condition that I will check. I want to check whether the height is greater than 72. If it is, I'll print to the screen, wow, you are tall. Otherwise, I will do nothing. This is what we mean by conditional logic. We will do something if a condition is true, otherwise we will not. So here is the program that I just laid out for you. I have a variable called height, and I ask the user to enter theirs. Once I have it, I have a simple if statement. I have the if keyword, a condition, whether the height is greater than 72, followed by a colon, and then an indented statement block that will print, wow, you are tall. But it will only print, wow, you are tall, if the condition evaluates to true. So I'm going to go into Python and show you exactly how I'd write this program. I'm going to go to File, New File, and I'm going to save this one in my Python projects directory as if statement. It's important that while you watch these videos, you follow along and execute the code for yourself. I'm going to declare a variable called height, and then I'm going to use the input function to prompt the user to input their height. On the next line, I'm going to put my if statement. I'm going to cast the height to an integer, and then I'm going to check to see whether it's greater than 72. So that would be larger than six feet tall. Then a colon, and you will notice there's an indented statement block. I have one statement I want to execute if the condition is true. Wow, you are tall. I will use the print function to do that. So now, if I save my program, and I go to run and execute it, I can test it. Let's say I enter 73. Wow, you are tall. Let's run it again. What if I enter something that's less than 73? Then nothing happens. As you can see, my code executed conditionally. Let's take a closer look at the anatomy of an if statement. It starts with the if keyword, followed by a condition that you write, followed by a colon. Then any of the code that you want to execute if the condition is true goes in an indented statement block. Let's move on to some of the variations. What if I wanted to test multiple conditions? Well, then I can add optional what are called elif or else clauses. Elif is short for else if. For every additional condition I want to check, I add an elif clause. And if no condition is met, it will be handled by the else clause which is also optional. So I have an extension of the previous program. I've added an elif to check whether someone is less than 60 inches tall, 
and a catch-all clause, this else clause. If you are not greater than 72 or less than 60, it will simply print your height is normal. Let's see how this works. Once again, go to idle and let's create a program file. I'm going to call this one if elif else statement. Remember, elif stands for else if dot py. All right, I'm going to take what I had before, my simple if statement, and then I'm going to extend it. Make sure you go all the way to the left and add elif. I'm going to add an additional condition. I'm going to cast the height to an integer, and then I'm going to be checking for whether the user's height is less than 60. I have my colon and now an indented statement block. If the user is less than 60 inches tall, I'm going to print, OMG, you are short. What happens, however, if the user is neither greater than 72 or less than 60? Well, that's where my else block comes in. I use the else keyword followed by a colon. And in this case, I'm simply going to print, your height is normal. So by using elif and else, I can test for multiple conditions in my code. Indented statement block, the else goes absolutely last and has its own indented statement block. Let's see if we can test this. Save and let's test the different variations. Enter height. 73, that should tell me that I'm tall. Let's run it again. 59, wow, I'm short. Now what happens if I'm neither? This will be handled by the else block and should tell me that my height is normal. So that is an if, elif, else block. Once again, the anatomy. Below the if condition, add as many elifs as you want. An elif clause starts with the elif keyword, then a condition, then a colon, followed by an indented statement block. If you want code to execute, if none of the above conditions are met, add an optional else clause with its own indented statement block. Next, let's talk about the while statement. The while statement is an iterative control flow statement that allows you to repeatedly execute code as long as an expression is true. So I have an example um, process flow for a program I'm gonna write here. I declare a countdown and provided that the countdown is greater than zero, I display the value of the countdown and then subtract one from it. I continually check to see whether the countdown is greater than zero. Once it is no longer greater than zero, I display lift off. So what I'm doing is a glorified NASA style launch countdown. Here's the program. I declare a variable, countdown equals 10. Then I have my while statement. Notice how it has a condition that checks the value of the countdown followed by a colon and then an indented statement block. Once we are done with the while loop, once the countdown is no longer greater than zero, we simply print out lift off once. There's an optional else clause you can use with the while statement. You don't need to have it, but it's handy for use cases just like this. So how would I do this? Let's go to idle and let's create a new file. I'm gonna save it in my Python projects. We're gonna call this one while statement. Dot .py. All right, let's write the program. First thing I need, I need a variable. We're gonna call it countdown. I'm gonna assign the value of 10. Now I have my while statement. My condition is while countdown greater than zero, followed by a colon and an indented statement block. In my indented statement block, I print out the value of the countdown and then I decrement it. And by decrement, I mean we are gonna subtract one from it. So once I'm done with my countdown, it will simply print liftoff. It will continually check to see whether countdown is greater than zero. Once it is not, then it will go to the else clause. Notice the while keyword, the condition, the colon, and my indented statements. Then my optional else clause 
and it's an own indented statement block. Let's run this. You should see a NASA style countdown. Notice how once it got to zero, it did the else print of liftoff. Let's take a closer look at the anatomy of the while statement. You start with the while keyword, you write a condition that's followed by a colon, you give it its own indented statement block with the code you want to execute as long as the condition evaluates to true. Remember, this indented statement block will execute over and over and over again. And then you can add an optional else clause, which will execute its indented statement block once the while loop is over. Another iterative control flow statement you need to know is called the for statement. The for statement is another way of looping, but in the case of the for statement, you execute code once for every item in a sequence. Remember, sequences are ordered lists of things. The most popular sequence in Python is called the string, which is simply a sequence of characters. So the for statement allows you to execute code a fixed number of times. I've got a process flow I want you to follow here. I'm going to declare a name variable and have the user enter their name. Then I am going to use a for statement to loop through the name printing out each individual character or item in the name sequence. Here's my program. It starts with a variable called name and I assign the value of whatever the user inputs for their name. Then comes my for statement. Notice how it says for letter in name. In this case, letter is what's called an iteration variable. It's a special variable that allows us to control or go through our loop. For every letter, I will print it out in the indented statement block. Let's take a closer look at this program using idle. I'm going to start by creating a new file. I've been putting my files in my Python projects directory. This one I'm going to call for statement.py. And save it. Now it's time to write our program. First, I declare a variable called name, which will be given the value of whatever the user provides. We use the input function to do this. Next, I put in my for statement. I'm using letter as my iteration variable. And then remember, I'm looping through the name sequence. It's a sequence of characters. My indented statement block is simple. I just print out the letter. Now if I run this, it should simply loop through all the characters that the user provided for their name. For letter in name. It's very logical. Once there are no longer letters, it should break out of the loop. But for each letter, it should print it to the screen. Let's go ahead and run. Run module. You can put in your name. I'm going to put in James Colstock. This is my sequence of characters, and it looped through that sequence one by one, printing them to the screen till there were no more. So let's look at the anatomy of a for statement. You start with the for keyword, followed by an iteration variable, then the in keyword, and then the sequence that you want to iterate through, followed by a colon, and then of course you need an indented statement block listing the statements you want to execute each time you go through the loop.